I think everything I just played is like MIDI data. And so I wrote and recorded the chorus just in my own voice, probably a couple keys lower than where we landed um, for Billy, just because I have a lower voice and just had it as this like hook. I had no idea what to do with it. I sang through like auto tune. So it sounded very kind of like atypical of like the other music that I put out. But I, I thought the chorus was super, super catchy. And I just kind of sat on it. I didn't have verse ideas or anything. So I just had this, I'm not your friend thing. And then when Billy came over at some point later to work on something else, I pulled up this session and played her this chorus that I had. And she thought it was infectious and cool. And the original line that I had written was, you think you need a man. I think therefore I am. And Billy was like, oh, it should be you think that you're a man. I think therefore I am, which is way cooler. And actually the the internal rhyme structure of that is is your and for, which is like just way better anyway. And so we we threw her on the hook. And then we set about writing uh, the verses together. When we first started this, I was I was in a different studio location at a house that I lived in in Highland Park for a while. And Billy was singing into a Neumann TLM 103, which she was just like holding in her hand. And so this verse vocal. Get my pretty name out of your mouth. We are not the same with or without. So all of that stuff is just recorded on a, a TLM 103. Stop. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and she really liked the laugh that she did on that take. And so, you know, it was a sort of a naturally quiet laugh. So we gained the laugh by like 27 dB just so that it would pop out in the mix. Man, I think that for I am. Stop. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Get my pretty name out of your mouth. We are not the same with or without. That was back in... Probably December, we wrote like those couple lines. This song, oftentimes when we're making a song, it's like a very short start to finish process. Like we write everything in a day or two, we record it over the next like week or two. This song was like, each time we went to write, we were recording while we went, but it was several days over the course of like seven or eight months um, to get each individual part. So literally that day, like all that we got was that. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Get my pretty name out of your mouth. We are not the same with or without. That was it. And then the next time we went to revisit it, we wrote this. Don't talk about me like how you might know how I feel. Top of the world, but your world isn't real. <laughs> it was an idea. To me, the heart of like Billy Sonics when I'm working on it in a song like this, not in every song, but she's such a like just incredible harmonizer. Don't talk about me like how you might know how I feel. Top of the world, but your world isn't real. So there's so much kind of chordal information in a song that otherwise really is just like a bass line and you know high notes played in a syncopated pattern. Like most of the chord data is actually just in her voice. And then I think the same day we did that, we ended up writing this part, which was really fun. <laughs> Your world's an idea, so go have fun. I really couldn't care less, and you can give him my best, but just know I'm not your friend. Or and that was just kind of like a, that was, we had the kind of instrumental layout of that, to be honest. Like, we knew that we wanted the verse to end with this sort of, like, stop moment where the synths would drop out. So we just had the, that set up like to write over. And that was like, as far as we got that day, just reintroduced the chorus. We added like a little dropout because the chorus is just each chorus is just a like a double, right? It's just the entire really just a repeat so it's it's sort of like what can we reintroduce the second time so the only thing that comes in on the second chorus on the second half is this clap which was just a thing that billy was doing in the room and i thought that gave it a really fun sort of like lilting thing which was really appealing to me so i just threw it in the recording there's also this sort of like um i'm calling it like cowbell type it's not a cowbell sample it's actually 
It's not that complicated, but it's, um, yeah, just this little kind of like clackety thing that like rhythmically is doing what a cowbell would kind of do in accordance to like the kick drum, maybe. Um, which I thought just gave it like a little bit more neck. And then we added this like bass sweep instead of the sort of one in the drums on that part of the chorus, which so just goes instead of playing the one and everything. And it's pretty understated. Like it's, there's not a lot made of it, which I thought was fun. But because we wrote this song over the course of so many different days, we, each time we'd sort of have to like re-inspire ourselves. We got to the second verse and we thought like, well, we really don't need to do all of the rhythms of the first verse. We don't need to do the melodies of the first verse vocally. And so in trying to sort of re-inspire us, I just sort of reintroduced like different components. So I added this synth based trillion patch. And just that alone, which is very sparse, you know, for Billy and for me to, you know, to write with her just sort of like completely turned the rhythmic components of the song on their head and allowed us to go to a completely different uh, place rhythmically, uh, vocally, which is this kind of, you know, I don't know what to call it other than just sort of like a totally different groove vocally. I don't want press to put your name next to mine. We're on different lines, so I want to be nice enough. They don't call my bluff because I hate to find. Yeah, I mean, we never would have come to that place vocally if we hadn't had that rhythm change. And I think that's sort of like a lesson I'm learning more and more in producing songs is like what you're capable of writing over what. When I first started, I was like exclusively like a songwriter and then a producer where I would sit at a piano and write a song. And then I would migrate to, you know, a, a DAW and record the vocals and record the piano and maybe add some drums or some bass. As time goes on, there are totally songs that we write that way. Billy has a song called My Future that we wrote that way where we just sat at an instrument and played the chords and then ended up ingesting it into the system. Um. In a case like this, like there are just things about the songwriting that would never have been true if we had just sort of tried to write it on an acoustic guitar first. So it was super advantageous to start with the sort of rhythmic components of it. 